Morning everyone, Jan Hicks of Jan Hicks Creates here, coming to you from Oahu, Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Um, I thought I would do a little tour of the Navy Lodge this morning to give you a look at where we are. It looks like the background is totally blown out. There we go, that's a little better. Um, forgive the wind. I hope you can hear me okay. Um, this is, a, I'm recording on a new um, iPhone 10R and it does not have any input jack for an external mic. So um, I hope the wind doesn't blow it out, blow out my voice too bad. Um, there are a lot of helicopters, tourist helicopters that go around. So that's probably what you're hearing now. And of course, lots of traffic. So behind me is um, looking across the water. We are at, on Fort Island, which is in the middle of Pearl Harbor, and the Navy Lodge is on the northern side of Fort Island. So we're looking across the water at um, Pearl City, Pearl Ridge. Um, you can see the mountains in the background. So yeah, it's a pretty, pretty sight. I'm gonna turn around here. My wind's going to, my hair's gonna go crazy from the wind. Um, but, so this is the Navy Lodge behind me. Now, the Navy Lodge was built in the late 30s, um, I believe 38 or 39, somewhere around in there, to be quarters for single, single military officers. When the bombing happened here on Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941, it was used as a hospital. This um, building was in the movie Pearl Harbor, so you may recognize some parts of it. I believe in the movie it was also shown, depicted as a hospital. It's been many years since I've seen that movie, so um, I'm not totally sure, but if my memory is accurate, um, but it was in the movie. Um, let's see, so I'm facing twirl, actually towards the Aloha Stadium right now, twirl towards the north. So over to the east is where the Arizona Memorial and the Missouri, the USS Missouri Museum are. To the west is where the um, USS Utah Memorial is. Most of Fort Island is behind us, out towards the ocean. Um, so like I said, this is on the northern section of the island. So I'm gonna just take you on a little walk around um, and show you some parts of the lodge. And I hope you enjoy it. Talk oh, and then after that, um, I am going to do, um, show you what I've been working on and do a little bit of a stitch with me. So. Alright, so as I said, Pearl Harbor, looking across to Pearl Ridge and Pearl City, the Aloha Stadium is over there, and the beautiful mountains of Oahu. As you can see, it's a gorgeous day here, and here's the entrance to the lobby of the Navy Lodge. do have open hallways here and this is some of the areas that I think are you would have seen in the movie there is a nice courtyard here and I'm hoping once we're done with this little tour this is where I want to sit and do the filming of the stitch with me so if the wind isn't too bad which it isn't right now hopefully that will work out we 
We do have a little breakfast room over here. Continental breakfast, juice, coffee, pastries, cereal, that kind of thing. Besides the juice and the coffee, there's really nothing I can eat, so I don't usually come down here. Now there are two buildings to the Navy Lodge, the main building here. We are actually across this little area here in this other building. Beautiful tropical flowers. I don't know what the purple one is called. The orange one, of course, is the bird of paradise. Gorgeous. The grounds are really pretty here. Well maintained. Nice to walk through. This time of year it does rain a lot, but that's okay, because it's usually just that light misting rain, and there's always a rainbow. What's not to love? There is a pool here. We haven't been in the pool yet. Today is our one week since we arrived on the island. And I've spent most of it in the room, <laughs> which I'll explain later. But here's the pool. Nice little setup for hanging out, which I will probably do at some point. set up here. I'm going to go get set up in the courtyard, see if I can do a little stitch with me. I'll talk to you soon. Alright, so I am set up here in the courtyard. You can hear the little fountain bubbling next to me. I hope that's not too distracting. So I mentioned on a post on Instagram this morning that I do have a finish, and that is my Tis the Season by Blackbird Designs. See, wind. I stitched this on 36 count sterling. I picture this plus. It has a greenish tinge to it. I'm not sure if you can see that in this light. You'd think the natural light would be good for it. The sun's behind a cloud, so that's not a bad thing because it was getting kind of glary. But I'm thrilled with it. You can see I used one of the other alphabets to put my initials in. I think that works. I was afraid at first that it was too much, but I think it balances well the use of all the red over here on the bird. You can see I did not do the words down here. I did the line of the half snowflakes to balance out the line up here. So I am really happy with how this turned out. So this is one of the kits that comes with um, the fabric floss. It had a needle in it. Um, it has all the finishing back and fabric and the trim. So, so I got us a little start on that this morning. The other one I'm going to get back to is Winter Wonderland by Kamiki's Winds and Prims. And that is here. That deer is so handsome. I just love those antlers. And of course, I love this fabric that Nikki that Nick printed specifically for this design. that, let me see if I can bring up the pattern for you and hope that the fabric doesn't blow away in the meantime. So you can see I have pretty much this half done. So these trees won't take long. Mr. Belsnickel is going to take a little bit of time and then this cute little birdhouse and more birds. So this isn't going to take very much time either to finish. So I'll get started on that as well. That's what I brought with me to show you. And I am not using the called for flosses on this. I'm using um, a variety of um, Victorian motto and just other things I had in my 
stash. So that is that. Hey guys, one thing I wanted to add that I forgot, um, so I'm just going to record this separately and add it in here. Um, I meant to talk to you guys about Letitia Beckett's um, video, The Crafty Curator, on Instagram, or on, um, what is this thing we do here? <laughs> Floss tube. Um, it's from a few days ago. It's her most recent one, but it's not like it's just been in the past day or two. It might be three days ago. Anyways, um, at the end of her video, she mentioned um, the tragic loss that happens with suicide. Kara, Kay's Cross Stitch, had talked about um, somebody that she worked with. And it touched Letitia because she has experienced suicide in her family. I want you guys, I, I, I'm not going to talk about it. I have experienced it in my family. A, a cousin of mine who was the same age as me committed suicide. I was not close to him as an adult. Um, we grew up together, but I hadn't really spoken to him in, in quite a while. Um, so I don't have the same impact that Letitia has, but it's a very important topic and it really struck some chords with me, um, mostly because of conversations I've had with my boys. So I just want to recommend to you during this busy season and this season that can really affect a lot of people negatively to go and watch Letitia Beckett's most recent floss tube. Again, the crafty curator. If you are not subscribed to her, I highly recommend it. She um, she discusses it at the end, but her whole video is worth watching because she's awesome. So anyway, I wanted to make sure I s and, and say that. Um, and I think that's it. So I will talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Alrighty, here I am back again, back in the room. No uh, wind to deal with, although we do have kitty to deal with. My little thingy won't go up far enough, but as you can see, there's a big furry ball named Nina right here. I assume she thinks she's going to help me. Actually, what she wants is attention because I left the room for a few minutes and, you know, they were alone, so alone all that time. So anyway, the light is wonderful in this room. We are having an east facing, facing window. Oh, now she's getting down. She's saying, fine, I know what I not wanted. And she just knocked my floss on the floor. That's okay. Alrighty, so gorgeous light coming in here. I think we can all see pretty well. Um, so yeah, the kitties are getting used to me being in the room all the time and it's a very close quarters. Today we um, go up to the apartment and meet the property manager. We haven't met him yet. We've only exchanged emails and um, text messages in the process of um, getting the lease and everything set up on the apartment. So we meet him for a quote, where's the, where's the camera? Quote, <laughs> air quotes, um, orientation meeting, which I'm sure is to kind of fill us in on the, the rules of the apartment complex and where everything is. And we went up the other day and did kind of a walkthrough on our own and got the keys, um, checked the mail, which is when I got my stitchy mail. Yay. Um, hold on a second to counting time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And there's eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, make sure everything worked was kind of a walk through to uh, let him know if there's anything we felt needed fixing and um, you know, just kind of a, a move in. This is what we saw as problems. These are not our fault kind of things. Um, so anyways, we'll meet with him today and um, learn whatever we need to learn. Our biggest question is, is there recycling? There is not recycling here on Ford Island, at least at the Navy Lodge, which um, is very 
disconcerting to Mike and I. We're big believers in recycling as much as possible. Um, recycle, reduce, reuse, that's, that's really how we live. And um, so yeah, if there is not recycling, we did not see any recycling bins or dumpsters, you know, particular for recycling at the apartment. Um, and if so, if there isn't, Mike said he will just take whatever recycling he, we have in to work with him because there are recycling facilities and bins there. So yeah, that, that should be interesting. We are debating whether to take the cats. Um, last night, the cats were rather annoying. <laughs> in other words, we did not get much sleep last night. Um, and so I told Mike this morning, I said, I just hate the thought of them being here asleep the whole time we were gone so they get a nice good sleep during the day so they can keep us up again um so it'd be nice to like take them up and let them just run around the empty apartment it means we will have to have some kind of litter box there of course but we do have a collapsible litter box that we got um for the travel across the country and um to have in the in the van when we pick them up from the quarantine facility here um, at the airport. So we could take that up and just keep that up there for, you know, temporary purposes until we get moved in. So we'll see, Mike was mulling that over. Um, the other news is <laughs> the Jeep. I think I told you guys that we had been, we got an email that the Jeep arrived the same day we did and that we were really quite astounded because that was very fast. It was under a month. So the Jeep, we took it to a vehicle processing facility up near the BWI airport, the Baltimore Washington airport, which is only about 20 minutes from us where we lived in, in Maryland. From there, it got put on a truck and trucked across the country and then put on a ship to um, come out here to Hawaii. Now, when we got to the vehicle processing facility here on Sand Island, they couldn't find it. They looked, I mean, we were there for an hour. They took Mike out on their golf cart. They looked multiple times. They got the assistant manager out to look. Now, a Jeep is pretty distinctive, right? It, it pretty much stands out from the other vehicles on the lot. And Mike said there were about six other um, Jeeps there. And he told the guy, you know, there was a really nice brand new Rubicon there that he would be happy to take off their hands if they wanted to do a trade. But yeah, they, they, they really weren't into that. Um, so yeah, the, it just wasn't there. And to say that we were all worried and disconcerted is kind of an understatement. Um, I, this just doesn't happen. You know, there's paperwork with the VIN number that gets put on, that gets attached to the vehicle. Um, when it leaves the originating facility. Um, well, what apparently happened is somebody else's documentation, paperwork, got attached to our vehicle. <laughs> and they never check the VIN against the paperwork again, unless there's a problem like this. So the next day, the um, manager here called the San Diego facility the shipping facility, and it was not on the lot there, but they were, I think they said, 99% um, sure that it had been put, or maybe it was 95% sure, but anyways, a pretty high percentage, that um, it had been put on the boat, like the day before. But luckily, our, um, or gratefully, maybe, our, um, the the manager here was not satisfied with that answer so he actually called the boat and spoke with the captain and captain did a search of all the decks and they did indeed find our Jeep and they did match the VIN number to the one that actually belongs to the Jeep <laughs> so we know that our Jeep is indeed on its cruise from San Diego to Hawaii it should get here, barring any storms out in the ocean. Um, it should get here either Monday or Tuesday. I believe they said leave 
I don't know, there's 24 or 48 hours for it to get off the boat and processed in processed here. So by the end of next week, we should have our Jeep. So that will be a good thing um, because we do not get reimbursed for rental vehicles. I think I've mentioned that before. It just blows my mind. Um, but yeah, we do not get any reimbursement for the renting. So we're looking forward to having the Jeep back. I hate these kind of knots. They're so stupid. I'm using a length of floss that is a little longer than what I usually use, just because I don't like, there, there are times I feel whenever I'm using the variegated floss that, um, whenever I'm using the lengths from Victorian Motto or Gentle Arts that are a yard long, I do like to cut them in half so they aren't quite as long and so they don't do that quite as often. Um, but I do find that, or I do feel like there are times when I cut it, where, where I'm cutting it in the middle, I might be losing some of the variegation. And this one, I love the variegation so much. Let me show you this again. So this is Rustic Green by Victorian Motto. And I love how it's, it's not just one green even. You see, it's the like a lighter olive going to a darker olive and then blending in with the brown. I think this is just a scrumptious colorway. And boy, this um, this lighting is perfect for it. Oh, so yummy. So anyway, um, I'm using a longer strand here than I usually do, and so it's gonna have a tendency to get more knotted. I don't think I ever told you guys the story. We, you know, and when we were here for the house hunting trip, we were looking around to figure out where we were going to stay. Um, for you know this part for the uh, for the temporary quarters and we looked at a hotel in Waikiki called um, I think it's just the Pearl Hotel and they advertise themselves as being pet friendly and they have discounts for military and DOD civilians um, who are PCSing so oh yeah well you know let's check that out and it was in walking distance from where we were staying at the um, the Marriott so we walked down there and we asked at the front desk, yeah, we're going to be PCSing and, um, you know, you advertise that you're pet friendly and immediately, oh, and we have two cats. Well, immediately the, the woman at the front desk said, oh, well, when we say pet friendly, it's really, we really just mean dogs. Really? I find that so annoying, and that seems to be the case in a lot of places when they say pet friendly. They're not really pet friendly, they're just dog friendly, which I find quite annoying. Sorry, all you dog owners, but it's discrimination against the poor kitties. So there. But anyway, overall, we're on, on Oahu, we're in Hawaii. I mean, it's just kind of insane. We still wrote, don't really believe it, no. Um, hopefully this weekend we want to get out for, um, going to hike up Diamond Head, hopefully. We do want to get some other videos up on the Sunset and Sangria, because that channel, because that has been sorely neglected for a while. But we shall see. We also want to have some rest time. I think jet lag is pretty much over, but the way we were both awake last night, it makes me wonder. But it has been a week, so who knows. Anyway, I think that's about all for today. I hope you enjoyed the little tour of the Navy Lodge in the area here. Um, and let me, I'm going to get out Tis the Season one more time. Oh, since the light is so pretty here. All right, interrupted by a phone call from the younger son, but that is okay. Let's see. Does it look green or gray to you? It's a very pretty green. Kind of looks more green when I put it closer to the light. Anyways, tis the season, Blackbird Designs. It's so pretty. 
It's so pretty. I'm very happy with it. I'm very happy with my color choices. No, I did not use any of the called for. Well, they used, they called for Belsois and I used Victorian Motto and um, Gentle Arts for the most part, or Weeks, Weeks and Victorian Motto, yes. Anyways, if you wanna know my color choices, let me know. I'd be happy to let you, let, let you know what they are. But that is all for now. I am going to stitch or knit or something to my heart's content until Mike gets here and we head up to the apartment. I will talk to you soon, guys. Bye-bye.